Okay, can everybody see the, the presentation okay? Give me a nod or a little thumbs up, whatever you need to. Yeah. Super lovely, great, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so um, just kind of before we dive in, um, just to kind of introduce myself and my colleagues that are here today. So um, I'm Simon, I'm the product owner for Twinkle Phonics. Um, so I've been with Twinkle for about uh, two and a half years. Before that, I taught for 10 years in Key Stage 1 and early years. Um, so lots of experience of teaching phonics um, and also uh, did a degree in linguistics before that. So um, lots of experience with this sort of thing and um, enjoyed being able to lead the product for Twinkle. Um, I've also got um, Mia and Joe. Mia, would you like to introduce yourself quickly? Yeah, thanks. Hi, um, I'm Mia. I am the training coordinator and team leader for Twinkle Phonics. Um, I was a teacher for about seven years and I've been with Twinkle for three now. So yeah, it's really exciting to get Twinkle Phonics training um off the ground now we've been running for nearly a year so yeah exciting stuff fabulous thank you mia and we've also got joe thanks simon yes hi i'm joe i'm the rhino readers and product owner so my team create the reading scheme books that match up to twinkle phonics it's a great team to be in and twinkle phonics is a great scheme to be involved with so looking forward to sharing a bit more with you tonight and answering any questions you have about reading scheme books thanks Fabulous. Thank you both. Um, great. So we'll, we'll get started. If there are people that join later, we can admit those as they go. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we don't want to, don't want to lose any more time. Um, our evening's precious, isn't it? So, uh, right, let, let's uh, get started. So uh, first of all, I just wanted to mention that if at any point you wanted to ask any questions, um, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. So we have got a chat window in the bottom of the meeting. And if you wanted to post any questions in the chat, one of us will pick those up uh, and we can address them either at the time or towards the end of the meeting when we've got a bit of time at the end. Um, also, feel free to use the hand up button um, so that I know that you want to that you want to kind of I can kind of stop what I'm saying uh, to answer questions at the time. Um, more than happy to answer questions as we go along. There may be something that I haven't thought of, maybe something that we kind of glossed over too quickly or just a question specific to you or to your setting that you wanted to ask, feel free to to um, put that hand up, um, put your camera on or ask questions with, with your cameras off. That's absolutely fine with us. Um, and um, yeah, just just feel free to, to use this opportunity, um, kind of a safe space to ask those questions. Um, and um, hopefully we can learn from kind of from each other as well. Uh, if you guys have got any experiences or questions uh, that might inform others too. So um, hi there, sorry, just, we're just about get, to get started. Um, please feel free to use the chat for questions um, and uh, yeah, put, or raise your hand if you want to, to ask anything. So a little bit of background about the program. Um, so Twinkle Phonics actually started in 2017. Um, now, as you may know, Twinkle has been around for over 10 years, but we started uh, the Twinkle Phonics scheme about uh, six years ago. Um, originally, we built the scheme on the all the great aspects of letters and sounds that were being used by most other schemes that have been created at that time. Um, we made some adjustments and improvements um, as we kind of kept in line with, with the curriculum as that's moved along and with, with best practice and the various guidance documents that have come out. Um, it's all been developed by experienced phonics teachers for teachers. So every single member of the teaching team that we have in our writing and editing team has experience of teaching in key stage one or early years classrooms. Some of us are with nursery experience as well. So we've we've got that um, that time and understanding of, of the pressures and what it is that makes phonics lessons great. Um, and we we're all um, involved in Twinkle Phonics because we we want to pass that on. We want to help those who teach phonics, um, and we want to to make this even work for you. Um, so obviously in 2021 things changed a little bit and um, schemes were required to be validated so we went through that process in 2021 and we were validated in December of that year so we've been on the DFE's validated list ever since then. Um, so yeah that's a little bit of, of history of us um, and uh, yeah we'll have a look at what, what we have to offer. So Twinkle Phonics aims to provide a consistent whole school approach with a clear progression. Um, easy access and simple to use quality teaching resources and if, if you're familiar with the Twinkle website you'll know that everything that we've created can be downloaded from site through your subscription um, on Twinkle. Um, we provided a program that's easy to transition to if you've previously used letters and sounds and likewise if you're coming uh, from any other scheme that's based on letters and sounds our progression is similar enough that you could transition to it um, based on whichever scheme you've been using previously. Um, 
we will we will send out a copy of everything um involved yes that'll all be inv included in your email um, so we also provide editable resources because we understand that your learners will have individual needs. You as a teacher will have your own style. Those staff working in your school will have their own particular children and understanding of those children. And so we like to make resources editable and adaptable and work for you in the best way possible. Now, there is a balance there because having been accredited and validated by the Department for Education, there are certain non-negotiables in the scheme, but we like to try and offer as much as we can for you to adapt that and make it work for the learners in your setting. We like to believe that you are the expert of the children and the, and the setting that you work in, and what we provide is a toolkit for you to use to do the best, best kind of teaching that you can. Uh, so our program is compliant with the 2014 national curriculum um, for spelling and grammar, as well as the 2021 reading framework, and includes complete coverage of all the sounds needed for the year one phonics screening check, which I'm sure you're um, eagerly anticipating coming up in the next few weeks. So just a couple of uh, ways in which we're different and similar from letters and sounds, if you're used to that. Um, so we have the same progression of grapheme phoneme correspondences taught through levels two to four. Um, we also cover all requirements for the phonics screening check before the check comes up. Um, and we also provide a detailed handbook to support you with, um, tw with using Twinkle Phonics. That's available as a free download from our website. Uh, we also sent those out to schools um, a couple of years ago when we were first validated and you can order um, more copies of those if you need them. Um, some ways that you'll find Twinkle Phonics a little different. Um, so we also include extensive planning for every lesson, uh, as well as overviews for every level. We provide um, full lesson packs, we provide assessment resources and supporting resources as well to go alongside the lesson and to support your teaching beyond the actual phonics session itself. Uh, we include tricky and common exception words um, that have been kind of increased beyond what's included in the national curriculum, um, because partly because we run alongside our own reading scheme, uh, Rhino Readers, we've we've included certain words that we know children will, would like to learn and that teachers would like to be able to use in uh, in literacy, um, and so we've tried to make sure that there's words above and beyond that we can use. Um, that we know are going to come up in those books. Um, we've also included a comprehensive level one program for nursery and for those who need pre-reading and writing language skills, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail soon. Um, also a complete level six program that focuses on spelling and grammar for year two. So the level six is really fleshed out from what you might be used to in phase six of Lessons and Sounds. We've also created intervention resources for both Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2, um, particularly in the wake of school closures around COVID-19. Um, we're aware that there are lots of children who are finishing Key Stage 1 with still with gaps in their phonics learning. So um, we've created a complete intervention um, programme for Key Stage 2, as well as Key Stage 1 children that still need those catch-up and keep-up resources while they're learning. Uh, we've created many editable resources so that you can ensure that a wide range of children's needs uh, can be met if there are tweaks that you need to make to lessons, if there are um, adaptations that you need to make to suit your setting. We've also got our fully aligned Rhino Readers decodable reading books, which Joe's going to talk to us in a bit more detail about later. Um, and also we offer training. So we offer both virtual and in-person training. We can come to your school, um, send our expert trainers out to come and help support you on your journey. We can um, meet with you virtually. We can set up um, a um, Google Meet call where our trainers can, can meet with you and, and give you all the training through a virtual session, which means that um, you can access that from wherever you are um, through through the, um, the power of the internet. So a little look at our progression and how you might recognize this if you've worked with letters and sounds or a, a validated scheme. So um, nursery typically would cover level one uh, throughout the autumn, spring and summer. Um, in a typical progression, reception year would include level two, level three and level four, uh, which cover all of the graphene phoning correspondences from phase two, three, uh, phase two and three. And then in level four, we look more at um, learning the skill of blending and in particular blending adjacent consonants. And then in year one, in a typical progression, year one would cover level five and year two would cover level six. And as I mentioned a minute ago, we start to cover more of the spelling rules and grammar in year in level five and level six. So so that that matches the key stage one national curriculum requirements. So a little bit more detail, but don't worry, I won't read out everything that's on this slide. Um, so it is a complete breakdown of everything that's taught at each level. 
So level one is, is split up into the seven, seven aspects, uh, and we cover those across a 36-week program in six-week blocks, um, which is really tailored to what to, you might find in a typical nursery setting and sort of common themes that would be taught in nursery, things like nursery rhymes, those who help us, um, local he local heroes, that kind of thing. Uh, we also then cover the graphene phoneme correspondences throughout level two, three, uh, level, sorry, level two and three that you'd recognize from phase two and three of letters and sounds. Uh, and then we start in blending, um, blending consonants together and doing more work on blending sounds in level four, as well as building up our tricky word bank. Uh, and then these are the alternative graphene phoneme correspondences and spelling rules that are taught in level five and level six. Those are both 30 week programs that are designed to cover the whole of a year one or a year two curriculum. So a little bit more about level one. So um, our main characters are called Kit and Sam and the children kind of meet them properly in level two. But in level one, uh, they meet toys from Kit and Sam's toy box and each toy represents a different aspect to kind of help both staff and children recognize those aspects as they learn them. Um, this kind of helps to give them a hook. Um, and there are 36 weeks of activities in those six week themed blocks. So each weekly pack includes a weekly plan, uh, an assessment sheet for small group activities, five small group activity cards and five large group activity cards. So in a typical nursery setting, you might be able to teach some lessons with the whole class. You might do some uh, small groups with an adult. And so we've tried to provide all the activities and all the resources to support that sort of um, environment. So the activity cards, uh, this is an example of what they look like. So the learning intentions and aspects are clearly shown on there. Um, we show step-by-step -step instructions for how to lead the activity and anything that you'll need, any resources, whether those are resources from the Twinkle website or other resources that you might need to, uh, to gather, sort of things that you'll find in a typical classroom. Um, there's always an extension activity for children that need that additional challenge. Then there are suggested enhancements to continue the learning through your classroom provision um, and then assessment questions as well to assess whether the children have achieved uh, the learning objective for that lesson. And then once we move into levels two to six, uh, we have weekly planning for every single week of the scheme. The planning includes uh, what you find in the lesson presentation. So we have a, a lesson presentation kind of PowerPoint uh, for each lesson um and along with supporting resources as well and the, the planning talks you through everything that's included um the key uh, focus sounds focus words for that uh, week and for each day as well and all the different um, activities that you'll find in the lesson packs and so when we were validated by the dfe some of our resources uh, we we separate some of our resources into what we call core provision and wider SSP provision, because we, we created a holistic program that we felt included all the activities that you might need for your phonics teaching. So as well as the lessons themselves that included extra follow on activities, things that children that we know are successful with children, things like songs, um, actions and um, activities, um, as well as things that you might send home to involve parents. Well, when we were validated, um, the DfE felt that some of those um, weren't essential as a part of the phonics scheme. So we've still included them, uh, but we include those as what we call our wider SSP provision. So those are kind of more optional elements that, that we think are really, really good and we wanted to keep including. But obviously you shouldn't feel pressured to use absolutely everything that we provide. It's really worth looking through everything that you find in the, in the lesson packs and um, focus on the, the core provision that, that covers all of the DFE's requirements, but do include any of that wider provision as, as you feel necessary and what works for your class. So for each of those levels from two to six, uh, there is a lesson pack for each individual lesson. So for a typical week in level two, you'd find five lesson packs for a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday lesson. Typically, the Friday lesson involves a lot of recap. Um, it kind of reviews the learning for that week. Um, in level two and three, the children are learning uh, a new sound every day or a new graphene phoneme correspondence every day. Um, and then on Friday, they sort of review everything from that week. Um, in level four, they don't learn any new graphemes or phonemes. They learn to blend those sounds together, where phase four used to be focusing on um, consonant blends in isolation, that's now not considered best practice. So we teach that as a, a whole level where children are taught to blend sounds together, um, especially the adjacent consonants at the beginnings and ends of words. 
things like star and pink and uh, the words you'd be familiar with if you've taught in level four before. Um, and we also teach lots of those new uh, tricky words as well. And then in level five and six, children learn a new sound or grapheme phoning correspondence, typically one a week. So the, the pace of learning slows down a little bit as they're learning slightly more complex sounds and they're learning that different graphemes can make different sounds that they've learned. So they've learned, um, they've learned, for example, that T can make a T sound and then they they then start to learn the different sounds that that, that that can make that it can also be part of a ch sound or a th sound um and likewise with lots of the different vowels make alternative sounds and the children learn those in level five um, and level six there's also a real focus on using those gpcs to spell correctly once the children are into level six um, as the focus kind of shifts towards correct spelling and accurate writing So within the lesson PowerPoint, and like I say, there is one of these for every um, day or for every, each individual day of the week um, has a lesson PowerPoint. So children are brought through a revisit and review section where they look at um, what we call Sam sounds. So Sam is the, the little girl from the scheme. So she's Sam and her brother um, Kit um, are kind of the main characters. And so Sam goes through the revisit and review section. They look through each um, Graphene phoning correspondence and the mnemonic that they've learned to help support with it. And the tricky words from um, the last few weeks as well. Um, then there's a teach section where we look at um, the new sound that we're learning that day. Children have a bit of formation practice, um, lots of opportunities to recognize and practice saying the GPC together as a class, um, um, including things like actions. Uh, we have a magic pencil to help with your uh, letter formation and handwriting. Uh, and then there's a, a practice section where children can practice using those in a sort of game or activity as integrated into the into the PowerPoint. Um, there's also a story that kind of runs through the entire lesson. So children are kind of kept engaged um, and those feature sort of cliffhangers at the end. So there's always hopefully a bit of anticipation for the next day and children are looking forward to finding out what happened next to Kit and Sam and the family. Uh, and then at the end of the lesson, there's an opportunity to apply those skills. So we have a reading or a writing apply side where children either read a sentence um, or they have an opportunity to look at a picture or prompt and then write a sentence. So you have an opportunity every week, a couple of times to practice the reading and a couple of times to, to sorry, to apply the reading or writing skills that they've learned in that lesson. And then beyond the lesson presentation itself, uh, we've got a range of um, work uh, follow on activities. So the main one of those is our workbooks. Now, again, these were brand new when we were validated by the DfE. We created these to give children lots of opportunity to practice their reading and writing skills. Um, so in order to fulfill the requirements that were, that were given to us by DfE, we felt that these really gave children plenty of opportunities. Um, and now they, we should stress though, we, it's something that's important for you to use the, the way that suits your children best. Um, we find that, um, the hour of phonics that's recommended by the government um some schools find that really hard to fill and need lots of activities some schools find that there's too much work to do um so it really is up to you to, to structure that how best fits with your class and with the children in your care um those might be activities that you want to sit with an adult and work with a group they might be activities that children can go and work on independently um but everything's provided in the workbook to, to practice and follow up the learning from that lesson there's also a range of follow on activity worksheets. So those are kind of different for every lesson. The, the workbooks kind of have a, a recognizable and a familiar pattern where the children do the same sorts of activities each day. But the activities, are, there's quite a range of things. There's, there's various. Um, you'll see some of the missing letter activities. There's also things. Um, there's also activities around formation um, and uh, a bit opportunities to write and kind of close exercises where they fill in the missing words. But there's, there's a whole range of different ways that they can practice and follow up from the, their phonics learning. And along with those as well, um, on the uh, on our um, landing page, on our homepage, you'll find a range of supporting resources. So those include uh, your everyday kind of classroom uh, resources, things like flashcards that you might use to back up your teaching, posters that you can use to put up on your walls or on your displays, um, sound mats so the children can go away and be independent in their writing, in their reading, and have access to uh, the GPCs that they've learned, the tricky words that they've learned to help support them with their writing or with their with their reading. Um, and then we also have uh, decodable word booklets so children can go and practice their words. You might want to send some home for practice, for spelling practice or for homework. Um, and all those resources are, are included on the, the support and resources section of our landing page. 
So another really, really important part of, uh, of any phonics program is opportunities to stop and assess the children and be able to track where they are with their learning. So we provided complete assessment packs um, and tracking resources to help support that process. So within each uh, level, there is a full assessment pack. And in level five and six, as those cover 30 weeks, there are actually three uh, assessment packs to kind of complete throughout the year. Um, so those include um, word reading activities, GPC recognition, uh, opportunities for children to um, you would read a word and they'd write it or you'd read the sound and they'd write the sound uh, and it assesses everything that they've learned uh, up to that point in uh, in the scheme so they also include tracking documents they include an on uh, a, um, a spreadsheet that you can use digitally um or um uh, they can be printed and you can use those as, as physical tracking documents as well um there's also a next steps grid to clearly show how to support every child on their learning journey. So it kind of gives next steps and opportunities to um, to continue to practice or to fill in those gaps. Um, and so, yeah, the, the assessment pack, each one contains everything that you need to carry out those assessments. And also, in order to ensure success for every child, we've created a whole range of intervention programs and intervention activities. So. Kind of starting from the top there uh, so explorosaurus um, is a complete program of um it's a it's a program that reviews all of the gpcs taught in level two um, but it does so in a sort of level one framed um um, style so that they involve a lot of continuous provision type activities and lots of practice of the GPCs that children have learned in level two but for where those children might have found that hard to embed or because we recognize that that uh, in level two children have just typically children have just started their early years their year our year they need lots of learning that's hands-on lots of repetition lots of practice lots of um, continuous provision type learning so we provided those sorts of activities in a very continuous provision friendly way and that's that's what we call Explorosaurus and those are packaged into all of the lesson packs throughout level two um, then we have uh, our same day one-to-one -one interventions so you may have certain children who um, after the phonics learning, you feel that they're still not entirely secure on the sounds they've learned that day. So those that program is designed for perhaps an extra adult or perhaps the teacher to spend just a little bit of time with those children that need a little bit of one to one to just refresh and practice and make sure that that the learning is really embedded from that day, a kind of uh, keep up style intervention. Um, so that's what we call the the one to one same day interventions. And it's all kind of as a script. So everything you need is there you don't need to do any additional planning you basically would, would um, print or use that digitally uh, and everything that you need is, for those sessions is, is is right there for you you don't need to do any additional planning around it um, we also have a key stage one group interventions so that's more designed for if you've got a small group of children that you've identified if they've perhaps got some gaps or perhaps they're missing uh, or they're not super secure in some of the gpcs that have been taught uh, those again are sort of scripted group activities so you might have a an additional adult or if you've got time for your teacher to, to pull a small group of three four children at some point in the day to just review one of the sounds that's missing not necessarily one that they've learned that day but it might be filling in gaps from earlier on in the year where you've identified that those are missing uh, similarly we have our key stage two intervention program which is called code breakers so we designed an entire program so that children that are in key stage two could um, go back and fill those gaps that might be missing from their key stage one learning. So every single lesson um, that is taught through levels two, three, four, five, and six has a code breaker session designed to help the children catch up and make up that lost ground. The idea behind code breakers is that we know children once they've reached that, that level, if they're, if they're in year three or even year four, these are children that are nine, ten years old. They may have done this, you know, already. Uh, they, they perhaps might not be so engaged by the the sort of characters that we designed for children in early years in year one. And so, the characters have been have been kind of given a. Um, we design them as sort of grown up versions of Kit and Sam, where they're a little bit older. They've got a spy type theme, so they're kind of looking for ways to break the code and figure out the missing letters and it's kind of designed as a completely different approach so the children are able to hopefully stay engaged even though they're that little bit older and more mature and won't feel like they're just kind of repeating that same curriculum that they did when they were four um so code breakers is a completely scripted it's all there for you um it, 
you don't need to do any additional planning or setting up. Um, once you've uh, downloaded and uh, got everything from the pack that you need, it's all there for you. It's all planned and hopefully um, ready for your children to be successful where they perhaps missed out the first time. Just going to take a moment to have a little bit of water. I do have a tendency sometimes to um, talk a little fast. But uh, yeah, do do pop your hand up or pop a question in the chat if there's anything that I've missed or anything that you wanted me to, uh, to answer or go over again. So it is that wonderful time of year when we are certainly in, in the UK, in the England curriculum, we're preparing children to take the um, phonics screening check, which is a government requirement still in year one. Um, so we've created a number of specific resources for practicing those um, skills to get children ready for the year one uh, phonics screening. Now, one skill in particular that we don't really cover in the scheme is the um, is the learning of, of reading um, what we call nonsense words or alien words. So um, the phonics screening check uses these uh, these pseudo words to check children's blending kind of without the confusion or distraction of recognizable words. It, it aims to, to assess whether they can actually blend sounds together in a word they don't recognize. So uh, they use pseudo words. Now we feel that that can be confusing in the midst of phonics lessons where we're trying to teach the children real words and words that are embedded in literature. So you won't find uh, pseudo word teaching within the scheme, but we have created a number of resources that do include them for if you're doing specific practice or teaching around getting children ready for the phonics screening. Um, so uh, those resources are actually sorted. They're sorted on the website into the level five um, phonics screening check resources. They actually cover all of the teaching through level two, three, four, and five, because uh, we know that children might need practice of all of those levels, but they're sorted into level five because we know that's typically where a year one teacher would be looking for resources on our site. So uh, we've also started to add a number of resources specifically for phonics leaders within your school. Um, so these resources look to cover everything that you might need to create um, a deep dive or a action plan for phonics in your setting. So uh, we've included whole school assessment packs for if, you, if you've kind of shifted your school over to Twinkle Phonics or if that's something that you're thinking about doing, you might need to get a whole load of children assessed so that you know where those children would be placed, if you wanted to stream, if you wanted to sort out groups. Um, the whole school assessment pack aims to be able to give you the tools you need to get everybody kind of, uh, to get a feel of where everybody is and where they need to be. Um, there's a whole school audit pack as well to look at your phonics provision up uh, at this point and help you align that to what's provided by Twinkle Phonics. Um, we've documents to help you create a whole school approach and guidance to get you started on your Twinkle Phonics journey, a whole school progression map, um, year group trackers, intervention trackers. And then there are a number of templates because we know that you may have to produce um, documents and things to perhaps to put on school websites to share with parents. Uh, you might need things to show Ofsted if they want to come and look at your phonics policies. So we've provided templates uh, to help support you with creating all of those documents um, and lots of support to try and help um, to get those things in place for your school. We've also created a couple of PowerPoints. So if you wanted to do a staff PowerPoint, we've got a staff meeting PowerPoint to help kind of get that kicked off and show staff um, a bit about what we do and, and how the Twinkle Phonics scheme will work. Um, we've also got a specific PowerPoint that's aimed at parents and carers, uh, and that comes with a handout as well. So if you were sending letters home, if you're putting things on your website, hopefully everything that you need is there. We are building our subject leader um, resources all the time. So there will be new things added to that range. That's a fairly new range. So we'd love to hear from you if there are other things that you need and that we can create and support you with making. Um, yeah, we, we aim to make everything that, that you need to help you teach and to help you support the phonics teaching in your setting. So alongside everything that you'll find on the website, we, we've aimed to make the website really um, user friendly so that you can find everything that you need by going to the Twinkle Phonics landing page. Um, the lesson packs should be uh, accessible and easy to spot and all the supporting resources as well. But we recognize that if you're starting on uh, using a new scheme, if you're setting up your phonics provision, the 
there may be support that you need and we want to be there with you kind of every step of the way so we've we've got different levels of support that we can give so we've created our phonics our twinkle phonics handbook which i mentioned a bit earlier that is like i say yeah, that is available as a free download you can go to the website and find that uh, and download that for free you can print it all onto paper if you want to all 200 pages of it or you can also order it from our twinkle store um so we also offer in school and virtual training and webinars now i can't stress enough um how fantastic our training team is um we are adding people all the time uh, in different regions so we can get to you and get into your schools and help support you with starting your twinkle phonics journey um but we also offer virtual training if uh if you're not able to have someone come into your school if it's more convenient to have us do that virtually um we uh we have virtual training through our same training team offers that training virtually we also have webinars which are aimed at sort of a so you might be in a group like this where you might have um, a number of other teachers or a number of other schools in the session and we we do those uh, every term we do webinars specifically aimed towards year two year one early years towards interventions with different themed webinars that you can you can go and have a look at uh, and subscribe to those as well um, we also now have a Facebook community. So if you uh, have started using the scheme and you're looking for answers to some of those questions, um, pop along and join our Facebook community. We welcome anyone that's using the scheme. We also have a a uh, Facebook group for teachers that are not actually using Twinkle Phonics but just want support with their phonics provision, whichever scheme they're using. So do come along and find our Facebook communities and get involved with asking and answering questions, connecting with other teachers using the scheme. Lots of good ideas um, that you can find through that community. Uh, and finally, the one other thing I'll mention is uh, Twinkle Cares. Now, Twinkle Cares is our uh, specifically uh, team that looks after you. Um, so they're available 24 seven via email, via phone call um, and via chat. And you can get in touch with Twinkle Cares. Now, they may not be able to get you um, on the phone with me straight away to support you with your phonics questions, but they will be able to pass questions onto the phonics team. We try and support with anything we've got with our resources. If we can help you, if we can create something um, along the lines of something you've been using on, on our scheme, if there's something that you want done slightly differently or an idea or a resource that we haven't thought of we welcome all of that um, if you get in touch through twinkle cares they can direct those questions um, ideas suggestions straight to our team and we can do our best to try and support you um, with anything you need um, so i'm going to hand over for a moment so i can also uh, have another drink of water um, i'm going to hand over to mia who is our training coordinator who's going to talk a little bit more about what we have to offer um, through phonics teaching uh, for, sorry through phonics training Thanks, Simon. You can take a breath now. <laughs> um, yeah, so every, as with everything else in Twinkle Phonics, um, like Simon's talked already a little bit about the handbook and a lot of the essential information that you need for delivering Twinkle Phonics is included in your subscription if you've got an ultimate subscription as part of that handbook. Um, it is quite extensive. It's over, over 200 pages. So there's quite a lot of information in there. So we do recommend having a look at that and downloading it with your ultimate subscriptions. Um, but as teachers, we know how important it is that you feel like you've got that support around you when, especially if you're starting something new. And um, so if you want to have somewhere to go to ask questions or just to check something out or to just feel a little bit more confident and reassured that you're doing the right thing, then the um, we do have a support group on Facebook which is a growing community of educators who are using our scheme. So any schools who have had training, any schools who haven't had training can join that scheme, uh, sorry, join that scheme, can join that support group um, for the Twinkle Phonics program there on Facebook. Um, and within that group, there are the Twinkle Phonics trainers are there. They can answer any of your questions. And um, there's also the Twinkle Phonics production team who actually take part in curating those resources and they can answer your questions as well as well as sharing ideas, giving you updates on all the new resources. Um, but it's really nice to be able to connect with other trainers as well and to build that community. It's a um, really good community spirit on that Facebook group, um, which is purely for people who are using the Twinkle Phonics SFP program. However, if you feel that you or your school or your setting or any specific staff members would benefit from some additional training. We do offer cost-effective virtual and in-school training options. And this does include um, 
a pre-training meeting that you will have with the training team before the training to talk about your setting, to find out what you're looking for in terms of training. So we can really tailor that so that it's bespoke to you and your setting. We've got modules for you to choose from, whether you'd prefer a half day, a full day, whether it's virtual, in person, we can really tailor that to suit your needs. And um, some schools that we've had have even had um, a full day's training booked, but actually it was a half day in the morning that was then repeated for a second set of staff in the afternoon so that then they didn't have to wait for an inset day, which we know are like the holy grail um, to try and get those booked in. So there's no need to wait for inset days to have that training. We can tailor it and change it up for you. Um, if virtual or in-person training isn't something that you're looking for, then we do have the webinar events that Simon mentioned. We do run at them quite regularly, at least once a term. Um, and these are advertised on TeachMeet, on the Twinkle um, site, in newsletters, on social media. Um, so those webinar events are quite regular. So definitely look out for those. Um, so if training is something that you're interested in, there's our email address just contact us and one of the trainers will get back to you. And in the meantime, you can have a look at our YouTube channel at Twinkle Phonics. So just a little bit about the support that you can get to enhance your phonics teaching. And I will pass you over to Joe. Thanks so much. Yeah, so I'm Joe. I'm going to talk you through the decodable reading books that we've produced to link with the Twinkle Phonics scheme. And they're called the Rhino Readers, and they kind of really do go hand in hand with Twinkle Phonics. Just like Twinkle Phonics, they've been developed and written by experienced teachers to match perfectly with the progression and learning within Twinkle Phonics. So you can show fidelity to your scheme, but mainly because we really want children to read. That is our mission, and everyone in the team is 100% by that. We know it's really important that children love reading and that it's something fun and they want to do so we've created every book basically with that in mind and just like it says here they are included as part of your ultimate subscription so the ebooks and access to them on the app are included as part of that so basically we are here waiting for you to to find us and use us alongside your um, twinkle phonics teaching you're right to jump on to the next slide simon so right now we're covering levels two to six of the scheme, although we do have level one books underway and we've got a couple on site at the moment. They are written and beautifully illustrated by our beautiful illustration team and they cover a wide range of topics and themes and they have diversity and representation at their heart because they've very much been written for children today. You can get them in three formats. We can have printed copies, you can read them online as ebooks, and you can also access them through the Rhino Readers app, which is free to download and access with your ultimate subscription details. So if you want printed books, and I know a lot of people and a lot of settings do prefer that, you can order sets of our printed books in two ways. You can either contact our, our lovely schools team on the email that you can see here, or you can buy the books through the Twinkle store, and there's a link there as well. And it's possible to either buy the full set of 96 printed titles, or you can just buy a particular level. So you could just get the level two books or the level three books if that was of interest to you. And we've just started to sell individual titles as well. And that is through the Twinkle store. So that's the bottom link there. And at 4 99 each, in, in shipping included, they are really good value. So if you're looking to bet one or two books, that wasn't possible before, but it now is thanks to the lovely Twinkle store. However, if you're a school setting and you're looking to purchase sets, I would advise that you go with the top option there and you speak directly to the schools team because they'll be able to advise you on any offers that are running and invoice you for the purchase. But there are two ways to get to your printed books if that's what you choose to do. You can either go to the schools team or through the store. Now, as well as printed books, we've got digital books via the Twinkle website and obviously through the app. And I think that's part of what make our books and our offering really flexible to teachers because it's possible to look at a book as a group or with your whole class on an interactive whiteboard without needing 30 copies. And then you can pick up exactly the same book in print or on a tablet with children later. One thing it's also possible to do with the Rhino readers, just like any other resource in Twinkle, is it's possible to assign the eBooks for children so that they can access them at home with the Twinkle Planner tool. You can keep your printed copies in school, some people choose to do that, or you can do the other way around and you can have the books available in school as eBooks or you can then send them home as printed copies. Either way, it's possible to make them available to lots of children there. 
Now, we're still growing and 96 books sounds like a lot, but it's actually not that much. And we're working on a top pack of an additional 32 books, which is really exciting right now. Some of those you might see on, as ebooks. We're aiming to have this top pack ready to be in schools in September. And we're going to be opening pre-orders very soon on that, hopefully at the end of May. So if you've purchased the Rhino Readers before, you should get an email advising you about the pre-orders opening very soon. And we'll be able to announce more details of this on social media very soon too. Victoria, you've just got a question about logging into the app on multiple devices. I think what, um, what, the, what the app does is basically it's a mobile app, which means it's local to the device it's on. So once you've downloaded the Rhino Readers app and you've got it, say on your phone or your tablet, everything that you do is stored on that tablet and it doesn't talk to anywhere in the cloud so if you kind of log on to the, and read a book on one device and then you go and use your at your login on another device you'll be able to log in and use the app but it doesn't save that profile across devices so if you're looking for a way to share the books which means that whichever device you go on to you can kind of see exactly what you need to look at what we're advising people to do is use the twinkle planner tool to allocate books because that means that any device that the children can go onto, they can read exactly the book that you've allocated to them. The app is really useful if you need to be somewhere and you don't have internet access because you can download the books and have them stored on your device. But if it's something about, if, you, if you're keen to allocate the books to children and let them pick them up on their own devices and have the same book where they're, you know, when they open that on that separate device, the Twinkle Planner tool is probably better for you. And I hope that answers your question. I know it's a bit confusing about mobile devices and access to the books on the Twinkle website. It's the same book, exactly the same book. It's just a slightly different way of accessing them. So for some people, the app is more convenient. And for some people, the website is more convenient. Now, obviously, as you'd expect, they're all perfectly matched to Twinkle Phonics and the tricky words, the common exception words will all match what you've taught. So you're not going to be asking children to tackle anything they haven't already learned. There's obviously a wide range of themes and genres. We've got quiz books, we've got non-fiction, we've got traditional tales, poetry. We've even got a quiz um, and a play script too. So all the diversity and representation you'd expect. And many of the books come with accompanying resources and that supports you to use them as guided readers as well. Um, are you ready to jump onto the next slide? So the Rhino Readers books link to the levels within Twinkle Phonics and within those levels, they're subdivided into A, B and C. And the reason we've done this is so that you don't have to wait until the end of a level to begin reading them. So, for example, if you look at the top there, once children have worked through the first four weeks of level two, they've unlocked 12 letter sounds and they'll be able to read any of the level 2A books. And we don't have a particular order in which they need to be read. You can access any of the book once you've unlocked those letter sounds. So it makes it a bit easier to swap them around if you're working with a group. And those, those level two books are very popular. Um, they don't use any tricky words at 2A, so children can really focus on blending while still enjoying a real book with a proper plot to talk about. And then once they've covered the next four weeks, they can then access the level 2B books. So the books are running in parallel with, but slightly behind the Twinkle Phonics teaching. So that really gives children a chance to consolidate and recap on all of the learning. And as the children progress, you can see those tricky words and the, the, the sounds that they've learned are carefully matched to those taught within Twinkle Phonics. So the load is divided up between those different sub-levels with all those opportunities for consolidation and extra practice. So you can see on this slide the levels a typical child would work through in their reception year and the different kinds of sounds and tricky words that they'd have the opportunities to practice. Now on the next slide, you can see that in year one and year two, the books follow a similar structure. Again, the workload broken down into sub-levels A, B, C, so the children are quickly consolidating and applying their recently learned knowledge. Um, another strength of Twinkle Phonics, as Simon's mentioned, is not only does it reinforce all your year one and year two common exception words, but it also teaches children a range of words unique to Twinkle Phonics, and the teaching team have developed those to support children's access to a richer range of texts. So you'll see words such as delicious, favourite and journey there at level six, as well as all your common exception words that you'd expect to see. You want to jump on, Simon? 
So inside the books, one of the things I'm really proud of is the before reading and after reading pages, because I think they maybe stand out a little from our competitors in that they're really bright and colourful and they make the children feel like this is part of the book for them. The before reading page on the left hand side, um, that's, the, that's where we're trying to get children familiar with all the GPCs and tricky words they'll see in the book and give them an opportunity to practice blending them. So it's lots and lots of phonics recap before they tackle the text. And on the right hand side, you can see the after reading activities where we're aiming to develop book talk and improve children's language skills through recall, sequencing, comprehension and inference, all at a level appropriate to the text. And we've got our Rhino challenges too. So there's a bit of enrichment there, some ideas for linked artwork, um, discussion, drama, craft, um, hopefully something for everybody to help children make links between texts and make them memorable to read. And finally, the bit you've all been waiting for, the costings. Now, we haven't put these up yet this, this year, so get in while you can. Our reading books are, I think, very keenly priced compared to competitors. And I think they're also very sturdy and good value for money with a really tough cover. And that's important. We all know that it's important to keep those reading books tough and sturdy when they go back and forth between school and home. So what you're looking at here is the full price as displayed on the Twinkle store. Um, as I mentioned before, I would, if you're looking to purchase sets, I would go through the schools team and speak with them just in case there's any current offers or best price they can give you depending on your particular needs. I've left the contact information there for you and we'll obviously be forwarding that towards the end of the briefing. Now, just before I hand back to you, Simon, I just wanted to tell you about a couple of exciting developments we've got going in the Rhino Readers at the moment. We're just developing the first of our level one texts, and these are going to be really exciting stories that focus on seven aspects of level or phase one, which you'll know about if you've worked in nursery before. I'm really excited that these books are specifically and explicitly designed to encourage children to use those skills. So we feel they're going to be a real strength of the scheme. Hopefully in the 2024 and 2025 ac academic year, we'll be seeing a complete set of those out. And the other thing that we're looking at uh, developing is a set of books to accompany the co-breakers intervention that Simon mentioned, which is the key stage two intervention for children who are reading at a kind of EYFS key stage one level, but who need books who are going to have themes and topics which engage older children because they maybe feel that the Rhino readers are aimed at a little bit of a young age group for them. So having something a little bit suited to older children, but which really cover those important phonics skills, I think it's going to be a really good addition to our little family of books. So I'm looking forward to seeing those. And again, we're hoping that those will be out in 2024. So looking forward to seeing the first few code breakers on site soon. Um, yep, I've, I've, I don't know if there's any questions about the Rhino readers. I'm really happy to answer them. Um, we'll pass back to Simon if there's no questions. All right, thank you, Joe. <clears throat> Excuse me, yeah. Great. So um, just a couple of things to kind of finish us off. And I think since we've got a few minutes, uh, it might be valuable to have a quick look at our landing page and show you a little bit of how to find some of the resources that we've talked about. Um, <clears throat> so just to mention that um, everything in the Twinkle Phonics scheme and the Rhino Readers is available through a Twinkle Ultimate subscription. Uh, and if you speak to our schools team, they can help set, uh, set up um, a schools rate for if you, want, if you need multiple accounts for a school. Uh, that's something that we can work with you on, depending on the size of the school and the number of uh, subscriptions that you need and included in that is like I say uh, the handbook uh, complete planning um, all of your lesson resources all of your supporting resources interventions for key stage one and key stage two the Rhino readers ebook and app is included in that and I can tell you as well that in September we are we will also be launching our own Twinkle Phonics app, which will be included in your subscription as well, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. It's under uh, construction at the moment, but it's going to be absolutely brilliant. And that will be there to support you with the scheme um, in the next school year. Um, our online learning uh, platform and training as well um, and support through Twinkle Phonics Schools uh, Facebook group. So those are all available to you through the subscription. Um, also, some things to, uh, to, to let you know about. So. Uh, our phonics workbooks, which I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, are actually available to purchase as physical workbooks. Um, so you can buy those in, in sets. Uh, and we've just released new editions. Uh, the pre-sale is on site now. Uh, if you wanted to, if you wanted to supply those for your classrooms, um, rather than downloading and printing everything, um, they're available to buy as books. Um, those will be 
pre-orders are going in now for you to have those in time for this uh, before the summer holidays, before you break up for the summer. Um, they'll be available as class sets, but they're also available as smaller sets uh, set, uh, of 10 if you work with small groups or if you only need a few. And we also do a single pack, which is one of each level of the workbook for uh, if, if you're a tutor or a homeschool um, and you wanted just one of each of the workbooks, those are available now as well. We're also just uh, about to stock up again on our physical resources, uh, which allow you to buy uh, flashcards, sound mats, um, all, uh, some of the posters and things to stock up your classroom. Again, saving you some of that precious time printing, laminating, cutting. Um, those things will be available very, very soon. Uh, we're about to launch pre-sale for, uh, for those bundles as well that will be coming on site in the next couple of weeks. So do keep an eye on the Twinkle Store um, for those resources as well, as well as the Rhino Readers, as Joe mentioned. Those can be ordered um, through, the, through the Twinkle Store. Um, so, um, we will have a few minutes for any questions, uh, if you wanted to ask anything, um, and if not, I'll just take a couple of minutes to take you on a quick guided tour through our landing page. Um, so, I'll give it just a moment in case, of any, in case anybody has something that they would like to ask. Uh, do feel free to put those in the chat or raise a hand and we'll do our best to answer those questions. And in the meantime, um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a minute and uh, I'll call up the homepage so that I can uh, talk you through where to find some of those resources. Mm. Okay, so this is our homepage. Um, oh, sorry, yes. Um, so the question about the apps now, I don't, th I'm not entirely sure that's something I can check, but I'm fairly sure that they won't be, the um, the phonic suite won't be, um, I'll have to check and find out for you, that's something that we can investigate and find out, um, can I leave you to have a quick look into that mate, while I quickly show on the site, um, but yes, I know the phonic suite is not available um, on Android in the immediate future, um, but yeah, see if Mia can check into the, the other apps very quickly. Um, so this is our homepage, which you can find at um, twinkle.co.uk slash phonics. Um, and that should take you straight here. So everything that you need can be found from this landing page. And you'll, you'll know that you're kind of at our homepage when you see the phonics family and the uh, approved DFE logo there. Um, so it can take you straight to our program guide or to the Twinkle store to go and order your resources. Or if you scroll down, this is where we have each of our um, lesson packs sorted by level and by week. So you can jump straight to the to the level and to the week that you need to download that week. Um, and we've we've got a quick download button. So you can immediately, with five clicks of the button, you can have the entire week's worth of lessons downloaded and ready. There's always a link to our handbook on the top page of this as well, so you can find that if you need it. Uh, and that, yeah, that includes uh, all of the levels um, and all of the weeks. If you scroll further down, um, you'll find the supporting resources. And again, these are sorted by level um, and then by, by the type of resource on the side here as well. So if you were looking for, for example, level three planning, it will show you all the planning related to level three. Uh, you might be looking for phonics games. Um, again, perhaps we'll, we'll look for level five phonics games. If you if you sort by level first and then by resource type, it'll show you everything that we've got for that type. And as I mentioned, the phonics screening resources are all sorted under level five um, phonics screening check resources there. Um, we talked a little bit about the, well, quite a lot about the code breakers, code breakers resources that we're very proud of. So if you go down to Key Stage 2 Code Breakers, it's at the bottom of this, the list here, you'll find all of the code breakers resources. There's an overview to tell you which, um, which lesson covers each skill. Uh, and then the lesson packs themselves uh, are all sorted under the different levels that they fall under. So again, level first, and then resource type, and you can find uh, everything that you need for those. Um, <clears throat> and something else, and Joe mentioned the planner tool, um, so that if you're logged in to Twinkle Web, the Twinkle website, you'll find a tab here that shows you the planner tool, um, and 
we're running out of time a little bit now, but using that, you can assign different um, resources and send those out to. So if you've got uh, children that you wanted to send resources to, if they're children in your class or children that you tutor, or if you wanted to make those available to staff that don't have a subscription, you can <clears throat> set up a folder and put the resources that you want to set and uh, set for those people into that folder and then share it with just the people that you want to share it with. And then even if they don't have a subscription to Twinkle, they can access those resources through the Twinkle Planner tool. Uh, and yeah, as we're running uh, short on time, there is a how to use function here, which has a explainer video that's really good at showing how to use that um, and how to set it up for the lessons that you want to share. Um, it's a really fabulous tool, but yeah, I don't quite have time to demo it right now as we're running short of time. But yeah, do have a look, have a look at the explainer video and uh, have a go at assigning resources from the website. Um, and uh, yeah, that's how that works. So I'll hop us back onto the presentation just for the very end because uh, there's a little bit more information on how to get in touch with us for help. So if you need to get in touch with um, any of the, the sources that we've mentioned um, for support, here they are. So as we mentioned, we've got, how does that come up? Okay, good. So we've got uh, Twinkle Cares, which is available 24 seven online chat help. Um, you can reach them by phone or by email and our schools team as well. Feel free to give them a phone call or drop them an email and they can support with anything related to orders for your school, um, bulk orders, bulk subscriptions, um, anything related to putting Twinkle Phonics into your school. So if anyone else has got any questions, we'll stay on the call for a few more minutes. But I just want to say a massive thank you for your time, for coming along, uh, for joining in and listening and for your questions. Uh, and if there's anything else that you wanted to ask uh, before we run out of time, please feel free to use this time. Oh, and thank you as well, um, Matt. Please do fill in the form, especially if you'd like your free Twinkle mug. Uh, and we always really, really um, appreciate your feedback, whether that's positive or whether that's some uh, things for us to work on and improve on. Please do send us your feedback. Let us know what you thought of the session uh, so we can take that into account for our future sessions.